Hi, everybody. My name is Don Smith. I'm with SSI Consulting, and I'm here today with Matt Zink. And we're going to be talking about um, roles and responsibilities today. So good morning, Matt. How are you doing, Don? Good. So, Don, uh, thanks for having me today. Um, I'd like to talk briefly with you about uh, a tool that helps companies define roles and responsibilities and help them display that visually. Um, so I find this useful um, when I'm working with companies who are looking to see who is doing what. Um, oftentimes, companies experience growth, and in that time, roles and responsibilities can get confusing, um, especially when workers get promoted or move into the position from a different organization. So this is kind of important because um, when you assign actions to specific roles, it sets authoritative expectations for activity ownership and avoids duplication and confusion. So here we have a roles and responsibilities matrix. And along the top here, you can see the different roles that you can be highlighting um, within the different steps within a, any given process. Um, and then as well as the function or the departments that which um, that individual would work in. So from the top, we have performers, and this indicates the step is performed by the function. Um, we have an approval, um, which indicates that approval is required by the function before work can continue. We have input, and this indicates the input required to complete the step. We have review, that indicates function that are required to review or be informed of the output. We have support, which indicates functions that support the completion of the step in the process. So here is a, a roles and responsibilities matrix of a restaurant that I have just created just to go through a quick example. So along the side here, you can see the process steps, greet customer, take order, prepare food, serve food, payment and cleaning. And along the top, we have the greeter, the head cook, dishwasher, server, and manager. So as we go through each process step, you can clearly identify who is the performer, who is the approval, um, who is required to give input, who is the reviewer, and who is on support. As well, along the bottom, there's a brief description of what that process step actually is. So if we start with greet customer, you can see the performer is the greeter and they take the customer's information and seat them. Now for large organizations, this would be important because it has a very quick snapshot as to what the different roles and responsibilities are for every single process within your organization. So this matrix can be particularly useful in the context of understanding process responsibilities at the macro and micro level. Um, when using the matrix to attribute roles and responsibilities, the process for change management is made easier by providing clear information about the authority that controls a given process. Okay, so thanks, Matt, uh, appreciate that. So uh, for the viewers, there's going to be a link in the description below for the roles and responsibilities matrix. And uh, you can download it from our website uh, just by clicking on the link below. So thanks for your time, Matt. Really appreciate it. Thanks for it. having me, Don. And for everybody else, have a great day.